So for single parents out there or for single individuals, what advice do you have for them for to manage their finances? For single, sing, I could I could speak more for single people, um, especially for for women, right? Um, for single women. Um, so health savings account, and I, I just love it, right? Uh, aside from it being a uh, tax advantage, I think it just have a lot of other benefits, but more on the protection side of it. So um, a health savings account, also known as a HSA, what it is, is think of it as a, um, think of it as a savings account for just, you know, any terms of medical, that pharmacy, things that you need for yourself, vitamins, however, right? Uh, office visits, procedures, surgery, however. Um, think of it as that. And health savings account is actually for insurance plans that have a high deductible. So if your insurance plan have a high deductible, let's say my deductible is, I don't know, $5,000 for a single person. So if they have a high deductible, most times that health insurance plan offer HSA. So while you are uh, contributing to your 401k, you can also put money into this HSA to help you save for out-of-pocket costs, to help you save for your deductible. So if I have $5,000 that's pushed to the side for my deductible on my health savings account, I don't have to worry about out-of-pocket expenses. I don't have to worry about emergency expenses as well. The thing with um, health savings account that I implore single women or just women in general to um, really uh, try to uh, start with a health savings account, at least open one if you have a high deductible health insurance, is because most times we just go through a lot of changes, <laughs> you know, in our bodies, right? Um, sometimes more than men. And it's always important to make sure your health is um, at is, you know, greatest peak. If you have office visits, if you have issues, hormonal issues, whatever situation may be, now you have a savings account specifically assigned for medical expenses, right? Um, so don't always think, you know, you, um, the mortality is forever, <laughs> you know, it's, it's not. As you get older, things happen. Um, and I want to share with others as I got older, things happen. You know, so I had to get a biopsy at the age of 30, 32 at the time. So it was very scary. And that biopsy cost me $3,000 because I had to cover, it's a it's an outpatient procedure, but I still had to cover that surgical part. But I had to do a pathology test and all that good stuff, right? So $3,000 that I had to at least come out of pocket first before my insurance could cover. However, thank goodness <laughs> I had a health savings account. And I didn't have to go through my own person, personal liquidity um, accounts or emergency or savings because I had something left to the side because I rarely get sick, but it was something very serious I had to take care of, right? So I implore women or even men to open up a health savings account. If you have a high deductible insurance with your employer and they do offer one, take advantage of that because most times in your twenties or even your thirties, um, sometimes you don't always have health issues. So that money is just piling up, piling up, just increasing. And you get the tax savings advantage of that, but you can always use that money for other things because it rolls over and it's just growing. It rolls over. So if you want to pay for expenses that you need for a hospital visit or, MD now, mercy visit, you have that money set aside for yourself. I think the best comfort for me is knowing that I'm covered. Mm -hmm. If I'm single, I don't have a spouse at the moment. Then if I know if I get an event of the things happen, <laughs> in the event of something happening, I'm okay financially where I can cover it. Aside from my health insurance, I have that out-of-pocket expense I can cover for myself. So I really implore uh, women and men to open up a health savings account if your insurance offer it. So how do you get access to your money once you when you have it on your HSA? How do mm -hmm. you, how do you withdraw money there? Yeah. So each um, 
each health savings account, they give you a, a card, a debit card. Mm -hmm. So you have, you always have access to your money. Uh, and again, you can only use it for um, medical expenses. So if you need to go to the pharmacy, if it's an office visit, um, if I'm not mistaken, you can actually purchase some things on Amazon, Amazon if it's health savings eligible. So if it's like a certain, a certain um, vitamin or anything like that, it has to have that label health savings, HSA eligible, then you're able to purchase it. But um, you do have access to your money through a car. Each administration of your um, insurance company will provide you with that once you open it up. Wow, that's a, that's a great idea, actually. <laughs> you can have a car that make it easier. Um, <laughs> yeah. So um, that was good. Um, as you know, the economy goes up and down. Some people are getting laid off. Um, how can you, how can someone get ready and prep themselves, you know, in these difficult times? I'm always the advocate. Preparing, preparation is everything. And failing to prepare is preparing to fail. So what I'm saying is that you always have to allow yourself to not only save for the future, we're talking about retirement accounts, but you need to save for now for the near future, right? So that's having emergency savings. That's having um, expenses down, um, not spending too much because you could go to an income of 80, 90,000 to a zero dollar income. And how does that look like for your for your uh, financial needs and your necessities. And I do want to share a story and I have this on my YouTube, if you guys want to check it out, is um, a month after I closed on my home, I was laid off in 2020. Wow. It was extremely scary. To this day, it, it blows my mind how I kind of just went over that and took that as a, um, just a gratitude experience. Because if I didn't get laid off from that job, I wouldn't have got, you know, a, a bigger boost, a bigger promotion from a new employer um, that I'm now with. But at that time, aside from it being scary, because I have a new house that I got to pay mortgage for, um, I had to go to game plan. Right. And I think going back to the importance of financial literacy is I purchased a home that I know I could afford easily on one income. At that time, it was my income for the last employer, easily. And also, I had savings account that I didn't touch, right? And with just, just in retrospect, during that time with COVID and you have um, unemployment benefits and all those benefits, I was very grateful that even the little amount of, it wasn't so much, but it helped cover the necessities, right? So I didn't really have to tap into my savings account, right? But also I had a network of people and incredible people in my life that helped me in this journey, not only people to talk to and to express, you know, my concerns, like I'm scared, <laughs> right? But also to kind of really sit down with me and say like, hey, you know, how can I help you? What career tra trajectory that you're looking for, your next job, right? And I had my best friend, Holly, to revamp and help me with my resume. What specifically are my skill sets and how does that look in this new job market? And I want people to understand that if you are going through layoffs or um, I know a lot of organizations are changing, understand it's not your fault things happen. And that's something going to, going back to what I said originally, forgive yourself. It's, it's not your fault, right? But prepare yourself. If it's coming through the pipeline, prepare yourself. Because if things are happening, you just don't want to be in the flow of it happening. It's not what happened to us. It's how we react to what happening to us, right? And I think too is you always have to find a time where you're just not complacent at with your employer. What I mean by that is what is going on in your job market? How is your industry changing? Are you really utilizing LinkedIn? 
Are you looking at, you know, great shows? Are you connected with people like MD <laughs> who try to give out exposure to other young professionals? What can I do now to get to the next level? How does the job market look in the next five years, six years? What kind of certifications that I need to make me a stronger candidate, right? So those are things you can help yourself now, even though if your job is secure or if you don't think any layoffs are happening, always put your, your ear to the streets. I always say that, put your ear to the streets. What's happening? What's going on? You just, you don't want to be out of the fold. You want to know what's going on in your industry or if it's another industry that you may be interested in. And it's also, I want people to be very mindful of understanding that although your income may change, you have to kind of shift that behavior of spending. When I got laid off from my uh, job at the time, I was looking at all my expenses. Like what, what, what can I, <laughs> what can, what's, what's discretionary? What's not necessary? 